Hello, hi. Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Today, our lecture is about effective ways of the French. Uh, you have already know how to design the T-beam. So today, uh, how do we get the effective way will be elaborate. For the French beam, uh, the French consists of the floor of the slab will be uh, <coughs> compressed together with the beam during the application of loading. So therefore, we have to calculate what is the B effective given by this slab. Meaning that the part of the slab will be in compression. The effective width of the T-beam or L-beam can be derived by using the equation that is B effective is equal to top, total of B effective left and right of the beam plus BW as can be seen uh, in the equation but it must be less than actual B. What is actual B? Actual B is the actual uh, distance between of the two span of slab left and right. Let's look at the figure. B the effective one must be calculated first by using the equation of 0.2 bi plus 0.1 l naught must be equal or less or equal than 0.2 l naught and this b effective is must be less than actual bi as you can see in the equations that b effective uh, is depend on the l naught so what is l naught Okay, before we obtain L0, we must first determine the moment diagram of the beam. Let's say in the picture, we have a continuous beam with an overhanging cantilever at the end of the span. And the first span, uh, let's say first, interior, uh, first support is a pin and there is, the moment is zero. And at the second support, there is a moment. And between the first uh, span uh, there is a moment there is a point where the moment is zero it is called contraflexure so l not here for the first span is from the first support m0 to the contraflexure point there is another two contraflexure for the second span and that determine the L0 for the respective B width. Meaning that we will have a different uh, effective flange for the whole span. This diagram gives us a guidance how to get L0 for continuous beam. For example, for the first span, L0 is equal 0.85 L1. Uh, the second span is 0.7 L2 L. Now look at the example here how to get the value of B effective. So diagram shown here is about uh, layout of a simple floor plan. Now let us how to get uh, B width for beam B13. From this floor plan, we can see that uh, this beam, B13, is actually two span continuous beam, which uh, we can determine it through the, the plan. The small box shows column. Column means, it means that the beam has two, three support. Now, after we establish the span of the uh, beam, now we need to imagine what is the moment diagram for this beam. Now I reckon that everyone know how the bending diagram look like, right? So the sagging moment will happen at span 1 to 2 and 2 to 3. And we must think that for the sagging moment, compression will happen at the top which, which is involving the flange. Therefore, these two sections, 1 and 2, 2 and 3, we need to find the B effective. Actually, B effective also occurred at support 2, but 
uh, in design we concern one two and one three because of the flange will compress together with the beam meaning that in the design B effective will be used for calculation of the area of steel while at the support the B web will experience the compression therefore we don't need to calculate B effective at the support uh, for the calculation of steel area therefore we need to find B effective for the span 1 2 and span 2 3 and we have three steps here the first step is to find what is L naught for the respective span the second one is to find what is the B1 and B2 for each beam and lastly calculate the B effective for both okay the L naught for this each span will be calculated according to the guidance given in EC. The first span L0 is equal 0.85 L for the first span, that is 3000. So we have 2550. While the second one, the same coefficient L0 is equal 0.85 times its L, that is 0.85 times 4500. We got 3825. We need to concentrate the cross section of the T beam at span 1, 2. And uh, according to the expression uh, I explained to you, B, we need to find B effective of the T beam BEFF1 and BEFF2. You can see in the diagram there. According to the expression BEFF1 depend on the B1 and L0. So now we need to find B1. B1 is actually the uh, effective span of slab A to B. That is uh, 2500 is the distance between center of center of the beam A to B minus by one width of the beam divided by two so we get one one five zero so this is B1 now once we got the B1 and L0 so we can get BEFF1 uh, is equal with 0 0.2 times 1150 plus 0 0.1 L0 L0 is 2550 and we get 485 millimeter and this value must be make sure that it's less than 0 0.2 L0 and also B1 that we calculated that is 1150 if B effective one that we obtain greater than 0.2 L0 so we need to take 0.2 L0 as a B effective one the BEFF2 can be obtained with the same procedure as BEFF1 so now we have a BEFF2 equal 635 millimeter and when we compare with the 0 0.2 L0 uh, it is uh, actually greater than 0 0.2 L0 so therefore we will use 0 0.2 L0 510 as a BEFF2 and finally we calculate BEFF is equal BEFF1 plus BEFF2 plus BW the value of BEFF must less than actual B. So in this case, we have a 1195 millimeter less than 3250. Therefore, our width of flange span 1 to 2 is equal 1195. So for this span 2 3, the same procedure 
were applied then we can get the BEFF is equal 1575 that is less than the actual B3250 so now we have established that BEFF for span 1 is 1195 and the second span is 1575 so for the design of the flexural steel the span 1 to B effective will be used in the calculation of K that is B is equal B effective because this B effective is gonna experience the compression and this compression area will be accounted for during the calculation of the steel area that will be required by the sections.